Are we recording? Yes, we are. Hello. Okay, so in this latest video, I'm going to be answering a little query that uh, one of my Patreon members, Les, asked me the other day. Um, he's got a bit of a problem um, because his camera club have asked him to produce a triptych. Yes. Um, but a triptych with a difference. It wants to be either a digital projected image, so it's one image with three separate images on it, which form a triptych, and they'll each have a little gap between them, um, or a triptych print, but printed on one sheet of paper. So what we're going to do is both. And it's a bit of an oddball thing, but, you know, camera clubs being what they are, they set their members all sorts of strange little wonderful tasks. But if we head off over to um, the interweb for just a moment and we do an image search for triptych, um, we can so the triptychs have been popular with religious icon, iconic art for mm, eons, right? Um, there's something that escapes me, really, if truth be told. Um, but I do know they're very, very popular with um, interior designers and things like that. And there's an infinitely famous triptych on Neighbours. Yes, and it's in, um, what's her name's house? The woman that runs the motel or the woman that runs Lassiter's. Yeah, and it's three images and it's uh, just a log on a white background, but it's split into three canvases and stuck on the wall. Um, so everybody who watches Neighbours sees a triptych nearly every day. Yes. So we've got what you might call um, discontinuous triptychs like this, um, where they've got three separate images which relate to each other. And then you've got the contiguous triptych, or what I call a contiguous triptych, which is one image broken up into sorry about that mr microphone uh, one image broken up into three separate components and um, rather like that yeah um or that or that yeah and make of them what you will anyway so that's what a triptych is all right so we're going to close down firefox because we don't want to look at those anymore and this is a panoramic image um, I forget how many um, images went to actually make this, but as you can see, it's just shy of 16,500 uh, pixels on the long edge by just shy of 7,000 on the uh, short edge. And what we're going to do is make this into a triptych. Yes, we are. So we're going to do both. We're going to make it into a digital projected, and we're going to make it into a print. And in order to do that we've got to take this image into Photoshop and break it into three components and I'm going to just do three equal components now as luck would have it I've already got the image over in Photoshop and the first thing I'm going to do is go to view show grid and that will just bring up the standard rule of thirds grid and each one of these columns, obviously the columns are all the same size, so each one of these columns actually forms one component of our triptych image. So the simplest way to break this image apart is to now go to View, and we go Snap To, and usually Snap To Guides is ticked. What we need to do is Snap To Grid, and with a little bit of luck, if I go and pick up a rectangular marquee tool, this should snap to the grid. Okay, so now we've made a selection of the left hand component or the left side component of our desired triptych. So I'm just going to go Command J to jump that selection to a new layer. And here we can see we've got a just a single that single one third image in its own layer so just for ease of clarity 
we're going to turn that layer off we're going to come back onto our background layer and with the um, rectangular marquee tool selected again we're just going to snap the center part out and I'm trying to use a pen tool here and it doesn't always do well so I'm going to use a mouse and there is the center part of our image and I'm going to go command J to jump that part to a new layer and of course coming back onto my background layer I'm going to take out the right hand part and we're going to go command J so if I turn that background layer off so there's our left hand triptych image there's our middle triptych image or our center one and there is our right hand triptych image okay so the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this image twice so we've got three versions of it so we'll go um, image duplicate and we'll click OK and we'll go image duplicate and we'll click OK again so now we've got three images open in Photoshop and this one over here on the right hand tab is going to be our right hand image the one in the middle on the middle tab is going to be our center image and the one over on the left tab is going to be our left hand image all righty so let us now just work on this image for a moment and i'm going to come to the background layer which as you can see is turned off and i'm going to introduce a new empty layer and i am going to go edit fill and just for the sake of being able to see what's going on i'm going to fill it with 50 percent gray and we'll click ok now here we go i need to turn on the other three image layers i'll turn this gray layer off just for a moment and i'm going to hit command or control and the minus to zoom the image out a little bit now i'm going to click on the right hand or this layer three in other words the one that controls the right hand image and i'm going to activate my move tool and i might as well use the pen tool now um, i'm going to activate the move tool and i'm going to hold the shift key down and i'm going to hit the right hand arrow key 20 times one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty and then i'm going to come up to layer one which is the layer which controls the left hand image i'm going to hold the shift key down and then i'm going to hit the left hand arrow 20 times one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty yes right so now what we've done is we've split the images apart so mm, theoretically they now form a triptych so we're now going to go image and we're going to go reveal all because we've actually shifted the we had originally shifted the right hand side of this image and the left hand side of this image outside of the canvas so now all three images are fully visible on the canvas and we now need to increase the canvas size itself so we're going to go image canvas size and i'm going to switch this out to percent and i'm just going to increase it by 105 percent in all directions or in both directions i should say and we're doing it with a central distribution so it will stretch top bottom and both sides equally and we'll just click ok uh, we'll just wait for the canvas to resize and then what we need to do is to go back and activate our colored layer 
yeah, 50% grey way. And I'll just go show transform controls. And all we'll do is we'll just stretch it outside the bounds of the canvas. And then we'll go view and we'll go show and we'll untick grid. And we will come back to our move tool. Come on, got to do its little transform. Yes, and then we'll uncheck show transform controls. So what we could do now is move this image out a little bit more, or we could just crop this so that the gaps all matched up. So it's just a little bit of fiddling, a little bit of resizing, but that would constitute in its bare basic form, a digital projected single image triptych. So we'll count that done less. I that suits the bill and you can work out how to settle it just a little bit more yourself and i don't know whether you're going to want to use one image and break it up or use three separate images so we'll call our single digital image triptych done apart from a little bit of polishing to the borders and boundaries and spacing so what we need to do now is to delete this layer in point of fact what we'll do is we will go all the way back to there yes and i think that's that's it that's where we want to be so we're now going to produce three separate images to actually take into lightroom's print module and produce a triptych print but all on one sheet of paper so this is where our copies come in very handy so if we come over to the uh, left hand image and i'll shut the history panel down because i don't need to see that the left hand image is obviously this one but we've got all this empty space these transparent pixels and we need to get rid of them because the in individual images need to be mm, rectangular and their proper size so i see people trying to do this all sorts of ways um but <laughs> the way to actually get rid of the transparent pixels is easy all we need to do is go image trim and trim transparent pixels and we just click okay and there we go and so we will now go layer and we'll go flatten image and yes okay and then we'll come to this image here and we will go image trim transparent pixels job done and we will go um, layer flatten image again okay and then we will go image trim transparent pixels click ok layer flatten image okay now what i would have a tendency to do is to save this image as right this image as middle and this image as left to a different magnification that's why it looks smaller so we've got our left image our middle image and our right image so we save them out and we take them back into our Lightroom catalog. So I'll slip back to Lightroom and I've already got them here. So that's our left image. I'll hold down the shift key and there's our middle image and I'll keep the shift key held down and there is our right hand image. So we've got all three images selected and I will go over to the print module and let's just um, pull up a normal template okay so what we need to do is a triptych so we actually have a triptych in our um, default lightroom templates in the print module and it's right down at the bottom and we just go and click on triptych and there we go now the first thing i want to do is to go to page setup and you can see I'm hooked up to an Epson um, 4800 at the minute. And no, I am not going to print this image. But 
we're on paper size A4, so I'm going to switch that out because I'm I like big stuff. We'll go and print it on A2. And the other thing we'll do is we will actually turn the paper round so it's like that. So the next thing I need to do is to come and uncheck zoom to fill and I also need to uncheck keep square for the moment I'll turn show guides off now the page grid needs to be row 1 columns 3 because these images sit in columns and of course if we turn show guides on you can actually see the columns but we've got a lot of dead space haven't we yeah so all I'm going to do is turn the show guides off and then the cell size I'm just going to increase until I get I'm going to switch over to a mouse until I actually get a print or a arrangement of these three images that I rather like and then of course what I could do now is just hit print and it would come off the printer looking exactly like that and then of course what we would do if we got a nice panoramic frame um, we could actually just trim this off and put it in the frame so that's basically how we would produce a triptych from one image but of course if we if we we don't have to do it with one image we can do it with three different images um, but really and truly um, if you're using three different images they all sort of need to graphically match um, so we might have three flowers or something like that and the colors and the layout and the actual compositions need to favor each other and um, quite difficult to do with three individual images uh, do and make it work right but of course if you want to break a panorama up into uh, a triptych it can work quite effectively i suppose but anyway there you go les i hope that's um helped sort your little problem out um and everybody else I hope you might have you might not want to do a triptych, but you might have picked up one or two little things that um, help you out in Photoshop or indeed the print module in Lightroom. So there we go, folks. Until the next time, true.